Welcome back to our channel. Today, we'll be discussing a highly concerning topic, Lassa fever. Join us as we delve into the details of this deadly viral threat, its causes, symptoms, prevention, and treatment options. What is Lassa fever? Lassa fever is a viral hemorrhagic fever caused by the Lassa virus and is primarily found in West Africa. It is transmitted to humans through contact with infected rodents or their urine and droppings. It was first identified in 1969 in the town of Lassa, Nigeria, where the disease derived its name. Lassa fever is a zoonotic disease. Primary reservoir of the virus is multimammate rat, Mastomys natalensis, a common rodent species in West Africa. Brief history of Lassa fever. Lassa fever was first identified in 1969 in the town of Lassa, located in Borno State, Nigeria. The disease was named after this town. Following its discovery, Lassa fever outbreaks were reported in various regions of West Africa, particularly in Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Guinea, and Liberia. The virus posed a significant public health challenge due to its high mortality rate and potential for person-to-person -person transmission. While Lassa fever remains primarily endemic to West Africa, cases have been reported in other parts of the world due to travel-associated infections. Despite progress in understanding Lassa fever, challenges remain. The disease continues to pose a threat to public health, particularly in regions with limited healthcare infrastructure and resources. Researchers are continually working on developing better diagnostic tools, antiviral therapies, and potential vaccines for Lassa fever. These advancements aim to improve early detection, treatment outcomes, and prevention strategies. About Lassa virus. Lassa virus belongs to the Arenaviridae family. Here's a brief overview of its structure. Lassa virus is an enveloped virus, meaning it has a lipid membrane surrounding its core. This outer envelope is derived from the host cell during the process of viral replication. The viral envelope of Lassa virus contains two major glycoproteins known as the surface glycoprotein, GP, and the transmembrane glycoprotein, TM. These glycoproteins play a crucial role in the attachment and entry of the virus into host cells. The core of the Lassa virus contains a single-stranded RNA genome. The genome is made up of two segments, referred to as the large, L, and small, S, segments. The L segment encodes the viral RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, essential for viral replication. The S segment contains the genetic information for the viral nucleoprotein, NP, and the glycoprotein precursor, GPC. The viral RNA genome of Lassa virus is associated with multiple copies of the nucleoprotein, NP, to form a helical structure called the nucleocapsid. The nucleocapsid protects the viral genome and is essential for viral replication and transcription. Beneath the viral envelope, there is a layer of matrix protein that helps maintain the structural integrity of the virus. How Lassa fever transmits. Lassa fever is primarily transmitted to humans through contact with the urine or feces of infected multimammate rats, Mastomys natalensis. Here are the primary modes of transmission. Rodent to human transmission. The multimammate rat is the primary reservoir host for the Lassa virus. These rats shed the virus in their urine and feces. Humans can become infected when they come into direct or indirect contact with surfaces or objects contaminated with the virus containing excretions of infected rats. Person-to-person -person transmission. Lassa fever can also spread from person to person. This typically occurs through direct contact with the blood, urine, saliva, or other bodily fluids of an infected individual. Nosocomial transmission. Healthcare workers who come into contact with infected patients' blood or bodily fluids without proper protective measures can become infected. Additionally, contaminated medical equipment, such as needles and syringes, can contribute to the transmission of the virus. Vertical transmission. There have been cases of Lassa fever transmission from an infected mother to her unborn child. This vertical transmission can occur during pregnancy or delivery and can lead to severe complications for both the mother and the baby. It's important to note that Lassa fever is not typically transmitted through casual contact with patient. The virus requires direct contact with infected excretions or fluids to spread from person to person. Pathogenicity of Lassa virus. The pathogenicity of Lassa fever refers to the disease causing potential of the Lassa virus and its ability to cause illness in humans. Here's a brief overview. When Lassa virus gets inside the human body, it starts targeting specific cell types, including endothelial cells, macrophages, and dendritic cells. Lassa virus replicates primarily in these target cells. 
It hijacks the cellular machinery to produce viral proteins and copies of its RNA genome. As the virus replicates, it can cause damage to the infected cells and trigger immune responses. However, the virus has developed mechanisms to escape the immune response, allowing it to persist and spread within the body. Lassa fever can affect multiple organs, with the vascular system being a major target. The virus can cause damage to the blood vessels, leading to increased vascular permeability and leakage, which contributes to the hallmark symptoms of the disease, including hemorrhaging. Lassa virus can also affect other organs, such as the liver, spleen, kidneys, and lungs, leading to organ dysfunction. Certain factors can increase the risk of severe Lassa fever. These include immunosuppression, pregnancy, and underlying health conditions. Pregnant women who contract Lassa fever are at high risk of complications, including miscarriage, stillbirth, or death of the mother. What are the symptoms of Lassa fever? The symptoms of Lassa fever can vary from mild to severe and typically appear within one to three weeks after exposure to the Lassa virus. Common symptoms associated with Lassa fever include fever, headache, muscle aches, sore throat, fatigue, gastrointestinal symptoms, cough and respiratory distress. In severe cases hemorrhaging may occur, which can cause internal or external bleeding. This can manifest as bleeding from the gums, nosebleeds, bloody stools, or blood in urine. It is important to note that not all individuals infected with the Lassa virus will exhibit symptoms, and some may only experience mild illness. However, in severe cases, Lassa fever can progress to multiple organ failure and have a high fatality rate. If you suspect you may have been exposed to the Lassa virus or are experiencing symptoms, it is crucial to seek medical attention promptly. How to diagnose Lassa fever? Here are the main methods used to diagnose Lassa fever which include Clinical evaluation. A healthcare professional will assess the patient's symptoms, medical history, and recent travel to potentially infected areas. Lassa fever should be considered if the patient presents with fever, along with other symptoms such as headache, muscle aches, sore throat, and gastrointestinal symptoms. PCR. PCR is a sensitive and specific method used to detect the genetic material, RNA, of the Lassa virus in blood, urine, or other bodily fluids. PCR can provide rapid confirmation of Lassa fever within a few hours. Serology. Serological tests detect antibodies produced by the immune system in response to Lassa virus infection. ELISAs and IFA are commonly used to detect Lassa virus-specific antibodies. However, serological tests may not be reliable during the early stages of the illness, as it takes time for antibodies to develop. Viral culture. Culturing the Lassa virus from patient samples can be done in specialized laboratories, but this method is time-consuming and requires high containment facilities. If Lassa fever is suspected, healthcare providers should notify the appropriate public health authorities to facilitate prompt management, isolation, and contact tracing to prevent further transmission. What is treatment for Lassa fever? The treatment of Lassa fever involves supportive care and the administration of antiviral medications. Here are the key aspects of Lassa fever treatment. Supportive care. Supportive care aims to manage the symptoms and complications associated with Lassa fever. This includes measures such as maintaining hydration, controlling fever, managing pain, treating gastrointestinal symptoms and addressing respiratory distress. Antiviral medication. Ribavirin is the antiviral drug of choice for treating Lassa fever. It has shown effectiveness in reducing the severity and mortality associated with the disease. Management of complications. In severe cases, Lassa fever can lead to complications such as hemorrhage, organ failure, and shock. Intensive care management may be required to address these complications, which may involve blood transfusions, respiratory support, and other appropriate interventions. How to prevent Lassa fever? While there is no specific vaccine for Lassa fever, there are several preventive measures that can be taken to reduce the risk of infection which include Hygiene practices. Practicing good personal hygiene is crucial. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water especially after coming into contact with potentially contaminated surfaces or objects. Avoid contact with rodents. Rodents, particularly the multimamate rat, are the primary carriers of the Lassa virus. Take measures to prevent rodents from entering your living spaces. Seal any holes or gaps in walls, floors, and windows to prevent their entry. Food safety. Handle and prepare food hygienically to prevent contamination. Store food properly. Dispose of garbage promptly, and keep your kitchen clean. Cook food thoroughly, especially meat, to kill any potential viruses or bacteria. 
Personal Protective Equipment When caring for a person with suspected or confirmed Lassa fever, healthcare workers should wear appropriate PPE such as gloves, masks, gowns, and goggles to minimize the risk of exposure to bodily fluids. Safe Burial Practices In areas where Lassa fever is endemic, it is important to follow safe burial practices for individuals who have died from the disease. This includes using appropriate protective measures and avoiding direct contact with the body to prevent the spread of the virus. Public Health Education Raising awareness about Lassa fever and its transmission is crucial in preventing its spread. Public health authorities should provide education and information to communities about the signs, symptoms and prevention of the disease. Conclusion As we conclude, it is crucial to remember that awareness and proactive measures play a vital role in preventing the transmission of Lassa fever. By practicing good hygiene, maintaining clean environments, and seeking prompt medical attention, we can collectively combat this deadly viral threat. That's all for today's video on Lassa fever. We hope this information has been helpful. Stay tuned to our channel for more valuable content on health-related topics. Remember, knowledge is power, and together, we can overcome any challenge. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you.